How do you get experience before you get your first data science or analytics job? Well, that's the big question, isn't it? Because it seems like every job out there in data science, machine learning, analytics, end-to-end -end requires some kind of experience. They want to understand what can you do? What can you create? And they want that experience to back up your capabilities. So how do you get that? Independent project work. And you'll hear everyone talks to you about, hey, get these independent projects out there. That's how you get experience before you have experience. But what projects do you pick? The biggest mistake you can make is to pick one of these generic projects that use a generic CAN data set. Those don't get you hired. Those do not prove your capabilities. They don't showcase your ability to do data science in the real world because they rely on a whole bunch of shortcuts. And that's not how the real world works. And you are immediately less credible if you do things with like the MNIST, the IRIS data set, or you're pulling from just canned use cases. So in order to really stand out to hiring managers, you have to get really good at picking business cases that are real world and applicable, and then just master the art of making a project that's as real world and as business impactful as possible. So how, how do you do that? One of the best things to analyze are marketplaces because this is a problem that almost every business has. You sell, you sell to a marketplace and there are dynamics of the marketplace that you need to understand for sales, for marketing, for forecasting, for a number of different roles within the organization. Data and analysis, sometimes things that are as simple as reporting, touch so many different pieces that when you do the analysis and modeling of a marketplace, your project is immediately real world and you're going to be more successful with more diverse hiring managers at different companies in different domains. So this is probably one of the best types of projects that you can do. So what's a marketplace? I'm going to give you an example from my personal passion, which is sneakers. I'm a sneakerhead. What does sneakers have to do with marketplaces? Well, you have a primary market where you go online to Nike or Adidas, or you go into one of their stores, you buy shoes. That's your primary market. And it's very easy to get most shoes that Nike releases. They release a ton of them. However, there's a secondary market. And these shoes that Nike releases, they do so in a very, very limited quantity. And there are millions of us who collect sneakers. So there's not enough of any given drop for all of us that want these more exclusive limited release drops. There's just not enough for us. So there is a secondary market and companies have sprouted around selling these shoes that are very hard to get. And in some cases, reselling them connecting people who were able to get these shoes with people who weren't and who want them. And so there is a marketplace and each one of those shoes immediately sells for above retail if it sells out. So you can start hearing some business problems here. I want to, as a reseller, choose the best drops to invest my money in because this is almost like a stock exchange where I invest in a shoe, I buy five, 10, however many I can get of this shoe. And then I want to resell it at the highest margin possible. That's the very basic governing dynamics of the marketplace. Now, let me give you an example. You can buy a pair of shoes and I did these guys right here, limited release, not a lot of these out there. I bought these for 225, got them at retail through the sneakers app. These are now selling for between 500 and $550. That's a shoe that I would want to, as a reseller, target and buy because there's a huge amount of margin. Me personally, I'm wearing these. Now even better, these, excuse me, oops, these, even more lucrative. These guys I bought at retail right around the same price. These now sell for about a thousand a pair. So this is a significant increase. And so you can see these are home runs. I am going to make a ton of money if I am buying these and reselling them and I'm flipping them. So 
Business problem number one. I need to predict what shoes are going to be the home runs, which shoes are going to do the best. And so those are the ones that I should target and try to get. And so how do I figure that out? Well, let's look at one of these marketplaces that allows me to go out and resell potentially. Like I said, I don't do that, but somebody who is a reseller will be able to go on these marketplaces. And this is where I start. When a company comes to me with that sort of a business problem, I need to mentally first get my head around the marketplace. And this is domain knowledge. If you're working in a company, you're going to need domain knowledge. And the first thing you do to get that is to start going to experts, people who really understand the dynamics of this system that you're going to simulate. That's what your model does. This is what a lot of people breaking into data science don't get a whole lot of exposure to. There's always a system that you are creating a model of in order to predict something that the business is interested in. In this case, what we're talking about is sneaker prices and predicting what the sneakers will resell for after they sell out. And you, you're kind of hearing there's some smaller pieces to this that I'm providing you. But typically, you don't know as much about the business problem as I do. So you have to go out and talk to experts and understand the market. And this is the beginning of your data science independent project. Usually people dive right in and they expect, oh, the data's out there and I understand. No, you don't. That's not real world. And if you go into one of these canned problems, a hiring manager like myself is going to look at your independent project and say, well, that's cool. You understand machine learning, but it doesn't provide any sort of competitive advantage because so does everyone else. Every other student graduating understands machine learning and can take a canned data set and a well-defined business problem and create a an independent project. And again, I look at that and I say, well, that's awesome. I love the fact that you're educated. However, I have real world business problems and I require different capabilities than the ones that you've showcased. So your portfolio has to do some of these earlier data gathering, domain expertise, understanding the business problem and understanding the system that you're going to actually simulate. So let me dive right into how we're going to start to look at this. How are we going to figure out the secondary marketplace for sneakers? Well, let me dive right in. This is a website where I can go and I've got all of these extra sneakers that are on this marketplace. Wow, that was clumsy. I apologize for that. So I've got all of these sneakers here. And I'm going to walk through explaining the marketplace to you. You remember these guys right here? I just showed you these shoes. These are a pair of shoes that I have. Now, in my size, which is a 10 and a half, they're $552 if I wanted to buy them. And you can come into a marketplace like this and connect buyers and sellers to each other. What's interesting is you see how different sizes sell at different premiums. So now you have an understanding of one of the features that are going to be important when you're making a prediction. So it's not just what shoe, it's what size. What size is going to sell out? What size is going to give you a higher margin than potentially another size? And you can see in smaller sizes, much lower margin. Still good, still definitely worth your time but in these larger sizes, as it gets to be more common, what you call men's sizes, for this particular shoe, it's definitely increasing your margins. So for a shoe like this, I would want to predict not only it's going to sell out, but also predict what the most popular sizes are going to be, what the highest margin sizes are going to be. So that's part of my prediction. I not only have to predict that one element, now I have to predict a second element. Now, what does this all depend on? You're hearing me say margin, good margin, bad margin. Well, let's define good margin. This is something that you often have trouble with in your data science problems is a company will say, hey, I want the best, I want better, but they won't tell you what margins are interesting margins. So again, this would be a question that you would have to ask the business. What's an interesting margin? Because if you do a data science project, 
and you start predicting margins that are 20%, 15%, and your business says, okay, look, average margin on the sales we're doing right now is 45 to 100%. So you predicting 25, 35, those aren't interesting numbers. So you have to ask the business, what number would be interesting? What margin is interesting to you that you would basically look at my solution and say, this is increasing our average sales margin. That's huge. So if you're doing an independent project, those are the types of things that you want to bring into the project. What was your proposed initial margin? Let's say that you want to increase, let's say the company's doing 50%. And that's, you don't have to actually get that from the real world. You can say, look, if a company's doing 50%, my goal at the beginning of this project is to increase the margin on each one of the shoes they buy to 75% or to 100%. And that would increase, it would have a connection to a business metric. And I talk about this a lot in some of my other videos is connecting model metrics to business metrics. So now if I can successfully predict which shoes will have a 75% plus margin with an accuracy of basically what would, obviously you're going to have some mistakes. And so those mistakes are going to result in lower margins. However, your total margin of all predicted shoes should end up being 75% plus. That's a tangible metric. Now you've connected a business metric to a model metric. I am going to improve margins by predicting which shoes and what sizes to buy in order to increase margins to 75% or higher. I have just framed a very succinct business problem and I've sort of accelerated you a little bit. You would have to do more research into the marketplace to really understand and get that on your own. But you see what I did. I took a marketplace. I took a hypothetical business, which there are real versions of this. And I went through the process of understanding the marketplace a little bit understanding the business model and the business dynamics of people that participate in this marketplace and who depend on this marketplace. And then I formulated a business problem that covers a real world scenario that someone in this business would encounter. And then finally, with all of that understanding, I mapped model metrics, my prediction and prediction accuracy to a business metric, something that the business would care about, improving margins by simulating this marketplace and predicting which shoes, what sizes. You see, that's now a concrete business case. I can now move on to exploring my solution space. And in the next video, we're going to talk about the next, this is really the next hardest piece of any independent project is figuring out where am I going to gather the data from to get started on this and to analyze all the potential features which could play into what shoe, what size. And that's my prediction. And we're going to talk about doing a bit of analysis and exploratory data analysis to figure out what data we can gather, what's feasible, and then what data should we gather? What is most likely to give us correlated or causal features for demand for each individual size of this sneaker? Come back for my next post.